All right, let's introduce um, a little help here for worksheet number two under COA1. Again, we still are going to talk a little bit about functions here, still reviewing the algebra bridging to the geometry. Um, in Algebra 1, we would have learned what a function is, and, and in its technical terms, there's lots of ways to say it, but basically, for each member in the domain, there is exactly one member in the range. Or for each input, there is an output. Okay. Now, uh, sometimes we diagram this using little diagrams like this, and so let me see if this can help us a little bit. So um, here's a couple of cases. Here's some domain items. Here's a range item. So if uh, 1 and 3 worked out, 2 and 8 worked out, 3 and 7 worked out, 1 and 6, 2 and 8, 3 and 7. This is a function. For each value over here, we got a value over in the uh, y values or the range. Now that's maybe pretty easy. What about this though? Um, let's see if you like this one. So we would get the numbers 1 and 6, 2 and 6, 3 and 7. Now this is definitely a little bit trickier thought process here. We used a number in the range twice, but that's okay. Think about what it says. Each domain item gets one y value. So this domain item got a number, 6. This domain item got a number, 6. This domain number, 3, got a number, 7. Perfectly fine. Each number here was connected to its a number in the y values. So you kind of say, well wait, what, what can't it be then? So it can't do this. You can't get this world. So let's take a look. 1 got connected to 6 and 1 also got connected to 7. 2 went to 7 and 3 went to 8. Here's the problem. This domain value here, these 1's, got associated with 2 values in the, in the range or in the y values. This is not a function. So a function is basically the idea that if each item in the domain gets associated with one item in the range. That's why many of you learned a, a cool little technique called the vertical line test. And the idea of the vertical line test is that if you draw a vertical line, this x number connects to only one y value right there. This x of whatever 3 connects with that y of 4 or whatever. If I draw another one, I get this x value connecting to that y value. This is a function. Let me show you one that is not a function. This is not a function because this x value, whatever it is, strikes a y value above and also a y value below. In other words, an x value gave me two different values. That is not a function. Now, why do I review this? Well, in geometry, um, we have things that are like functions. They are called mappings. And a mapping is exactly this, that it would allow, in a geometric sense, a shape to be mapped into another shape so that it would have a, at least, uh, it would have 
an assignment of one uh, location in, in the next mapping. Let me show you what I mean. So this shape here, let's say, has four points. To map this could mean that we map it to something that looks like this. Does this make sense? Well, A could go to D, B could go to D, C could go to E, and D could go to F. Everybody in the domain found a place in the range. Now, I know you're crossing your eyes and you're saying to yourself, what is he talking about? We actually don't like these kinds of mappings. We don't want quadrilaterals when we're done with them turning into triangles. We don't want that. Um, certainly, uh, we want it where we start with four points. And when we're done, whatever it may look like, it's still got four points. So a mapping allows for that mess. So we want to be a little more specific. We want to match up with something called a one-to-one -one function. And what a one-to-one -one function says is that it upgrades this a little bit that says each member in the domain gets a unique assignment in the range. In other words, it would have to be that if you were assigning a domain to a range, that everybody got a unique partner. That's a one-to-one -one function. And so in our world, we, in the geometry world, we upgrade this from this business of a mapping, which is just generally meaning to take points and to move them to a new location, but we could have a weird situation where we may lose a point or two in a mapping. So we want to upgrade to something called a transformation. And a transformation is a mapping that is one to one. So if you start with four points in a quadrilateral and you do a transformation, you will end up with four when you're done. If you start with a triangle and you trans transform it, you end with a triangle. So the word mapping in geometry is a generic word to mean moving or altering. We are going to study this year transformations because we want to hold the property of if we start with a shape, we end with a form of that shape. We'll look at a couple under the document camera now. So let's look at a couple examples from the worksheets and just to give you, uh, you know, a direct view of what they might look like when you go home and try them on your own. So here's a set A, set B, or our domain and our range. Every item in A got assigned an item in B. Is this a function? Of course it is. Yes, it is. In this case, uh, A went to D, B went to F, C went to F. So let's look at that. A went to D, B went to F, and C went to F. Each item in the domain got assigned an item in the range. This is a function. Yes. All right, here we have A going to D, A going to G, and C going to F. Here's a bad situation because A got doubly assigned. And the rule is one value for uh, each domain item. A got two values, a B and a G. And then finally, this last one, A gets assigned G, C gets assigned G. That is also a function. Now remember, a mapping is a type of a function. So mapping will do the same kind of things, and it's kind of awkward. Um, is this a mapping? Three items going to three items? Yes, it is. Uh, two, three items going to two items? Sure, that is still a mapping, a weird one. For instance, K maybe went to Q, 
L maybe went to Q, and M went to R, maybe. And so that's a yes answer. We don't like this. This feels kind of dumb. Uh, and mappings are just general descriptions of different things that could happen. Uh, this, on the other hand, take a look how we have three vertices and four here. So let's say K went to S, L went to T, uh, M went to U. Here's the problem. One of these would have to be assigned to V, let's say K. And guess what? K got assigned two values. This is not a mapping. And then this is also a mapping. K went to T, L went to T, M went to T. This is a mapping. Now, like I said previously, we're not, mappings are just general descriptions. We're more interested in uh, a transformation. And a transformation is a one-to-one -one mapping. So notice this guy here starts with one, two, three, four, five, six points, goes to three. Is this a transformation? No, it's not. Okay? This one starts at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 points. Is this a transformation? Let's count that again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is not a transformation. Is this a transformation? Yes. One, two, three, four points. One, two, three, four points. Yes. So this is a mapping, uh, this going to this, but it's not a transformation. This is not a mapping and not a transformation. And this is a mapping and it's also a transformation because it's a one-to-one -one mapping. Hope that helps.